Hey guys, today we're going to talk about polar coordinates and how we can convert those to vector components. So here's a little bit of review of notation. So when we see parentheses, comma, a couple numbers there, that's just a coordinate point, an x and y coordinate. When we see the same numbers, but the parentheses are a little pointy now, those are vector components. So the terminal point would be at this coordinate point here, 40, negative, or negative 40, 30, but now there's a vector that goes to that point. Okay, so let's go down to this first graph and graph that. So it says we're going to graph part B in standard position, meaning we're going to start at the origin, and we're going to let each increment equal 10 units. So the components were negative 40, 30. So the x component means go 40 left, 10, 20, 30, 40. And then the y component is 30, 10, 20, 30. So there's the point, negative 40, 30. But as a vector, that means I've got the initial side here, at the origin, the terminal side at negative 40, 30, and the vector looks like that. Now when I go back to regular parentheses, but I've got negative 40 and then 30 degrees, that is a polar coordinate. Okay, and that is in the form r theta. Now when you graph polar coordinates, it's on a graph like this, it's circular. So that would be, that negative 40 would be the length of a radius of one of these circles. And it represents for the vector, the magnitude. So we're in the form r theta, where r is the magnitude and theta, the number of degrees is the direction. So we're going to graph C here on this graph. So it's negative 40, so 10, 20, 30, 40, and then 30 degrees. And when you have positive degrees, that means you're going counterclockwise. So 10, 20, 30 degrees. There's the vector from polar form. It's got a magnitude of 40 and negative 30 degrees is the direction. So that one was found by graphing negative 40, 30 degrees. We could also have used 40, which would have brought us out here, but then we would have to go all the way around to here. So to here is 180, 190, 200, and 210. So 40 and 210 degrees would give us the same vector. I could also have gone positive 40, so out to here, and then this way. Uh, it's clockwise, so that would be negative degrees, and that's going to be 150, so negative 150 degrees. So all three of these get us to that same vector. So now we're going to talk about how to relate polar coordinates and vector components. Okay, so convert from polar form to vector component form. So if I graph this, I'm not going to draw the circular graph, but if I graph it on a coordinate plane, a magnitude of 7 that goes out 7 and then rotates 32 degrees counterclockwise because it's positive. So it looks about like that. Component form, I need to find the x and y components. So I'm going to turn that into a right triangle. Here's the vector's x component, and here is the vector's y component. And I can use trigonometry to find those components. So there's my right angle. If I'm looking for the x component, I've got the adjacent leg, and 7 is the hypotenuse, so I'm going to use cosine. Cosine, 32 degrees equals the adjacent, which is the vector's x component, over the hypotenuse, 7. 
Okay, so I can cross multiply, so I get the vector's x component is 7 times cosine 32. And when I type that in my calculator, I don't need to write that, I'm trying to write that in component form. The vector's com x component is 5.94. For the y component, I've got opposite and hypotenuse, so I'm going to use sine. So sine 32 equals the vector's y component over the hypotenuse. So the vector's y component is 7 sine 32. Okay, and when I multiply 7 by sine 32, I get 3.71. So here we are in component form. Now we're going to shorten that up by using some things that well, we already know and combining them with what we just did here. We've known for a while that x is related to cosine and y is related to sine. So when we're finding the x component, we're going to use cosine. When we're finding the y component, we are going to use sine. So the vector's x component will always be r cosine theta. And the vector's y component will always be r sine theta. So here, the vector's x component is 5 cosine 143. And the y component is 5 sine 143. Okay, so when you type that in your calculator, you're going to get the x component is negative 3.99. The y component is 3.01. I'd like you to pause the video and try C and D. Put those, or convert those from polar form to vector component form. So what you should have done is the vector's x component is 9 cosine 192. And the vector's y component is 9 sine 192. So you get an x component of negative 8.80 and a y component of negative 1.87. And for D, the X component is 14 cosine, negative 23. And the Y component is 14 sine, negative 23. So that gives you an X component of 12.89 and a Y component of negative 5.47. So that's how you convert between polar and coordinate, or component form, between polar and component form. And last, we are going to convert from polar coordinates to magnitude and direction form, which means in the end, we want to just write magnitude equals direction equals. So a lot of times when I allow you to try this on your own, what ends up happening is you do all the work we did of above to put it in component form, and then you use uh, the distance formula to get the magnitude, you use trigonometry to get the direction, but if we can just go back a page here quickly, Polar coordinate form is in the form r theta, which is magnitude and direction. So here's r, here's theta, the magnitude is 9, the direction is 192 degrees. The magnitude here is 14. The direction is negative 23 degrees. I'm going to add something here. I'm going to add a C. Okay, so very similar to B except now with a negative here 
on R. The magnitude is always listed as a positive number. So the magnitude is 14. When you have a negative R and you write your magnitude as a positive number, that's the time when you've got to be careful about your direction. Okay, so negative 14, we'll say that's about right there. And negative 23 degrees means clockwise, 23 degrees. So that's about what the vector would look like. But if we write positive 14 for the magnitude, usually you're going to want to go this way to the right. But we've got to rotate that all the way around to here. And that's not 23 degrees. That's 157 degrees. 180 minus 23. So the direction is 157 degrees. So be careful when R is negative and you have to find your direction.